Well, it seems everything we do or want nowadays is being regulated. The speed we must go on most of the roads are restricted to 50 miles per hour and regulated by cameras. The car I own has now been changed that I can no longer have a diesel. I'm restricted and regulated to a petrol engine. But not all things regulated are bad news. In fact, quite the contrary. Control and regulation of air from a PCP can only improve everything. So, let's put this ultimate sporter regulated to the test and see if it does improve everything. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the latest offering from Air Arms. It's the S510R Ultimate Sporter Regulated. And with the word regulated in there, you just know the chrono is coming out later to put that to the test. Because there are regulators and there are regulators. Firstly, let's take a look at this non-budget pre-charged air rifle. Well, it's long. Maybe that's because I've been reviewing a lot of shorter carbines recently. This is 1,010 millimetres or 39 and 3 quarter inches. It weighs in at 3.3 kilograms unscoped, but it's nicely balanced. In medieval speak, of course, that's about 7.25 pounds in weight. It has a silenced, fully shrouded Lothal Walther 395 millimetre barrel. It is dressed in all black and has a beautiful hardwood stock. No other colours and it looks better for it in my opinion. From the front there is a Qtech air arm silencer on the end of that barrel making this super quiet. Below this is a screw top covering the filler point. The cylinder states a maximum working pressure of 250 bar and a maximum fill pressure of 260 bar. But my experience with air arms rifles is you get better results with less pressure and I would never take this anywhere near that stated pressure. They claim a shot count of 120 in 22 caliber and 90 in 177. And that sounds about right from my experience using this gun. Moving back to that beautiful yet somewhat squared off stock, you find recesses where you need recesses and stippled grip where you need those too. On the underside is a rail to mount targeting aids and there is a swivel stud already fitted from the factory. The pressure indicator or air gauge is quite recessed at the bottom of the stock and has a moving red and green system rather than a needle and this also has a delay when filling so better to rely upon your external gauge when filling and then just use this to check on the remaining air when in use further down the stock molding tapers out as it meets the black metal trigger guard which houses the fully adjustable two-stage trigger which was set up perfectly for me on this one. It also incorporates a push through safety. Not really a favorite of mine. I'm not a fan of safeties on triggers for obvious reasons. The grip is also stippled and allows for thumbs up or thumbs down shooting with a recess for your thumb if you're shooting thumbs up. The underside of the grip has the rather nice Air Arms logo embossed into the wood which is another nice touch. Then moving all the way back reveals a plethora of adjustment features with the adjustable cheek piece in this rubberized black taking centre stage with height adjustments via the screw in the stock and tilt adjustments in the cheek piece itself. At first this black colour seems quite out of place but it grows on you and says quality and added comfort. The butt pad is also adjustable if required. The stock is 
definitely ambidextrous. But the lever action is not, certainly not evidently, interchangeable. So, should this be classed as a true ambidextrous gun? I'll let you decide on that one. Talking about that side lever action, it is super smooth and indexes each round from the 10 round magazine, which is incidentally smoked black colour to match the rest of the gun, and there are two supplied in the box. It's always a nice touch. The regulator that is inside the Air Arms is a Series 6 regulator, and without further ado, let's talk about the chrono results. Well, it must be said it does appear to be a quality regulator, because straight out of the box this was shooting some quite tight spreads, with a maximum spread of 5 feet per second, giving a perfect sub 12 foot pound result of 785 feet per second or 11.55 foot pounds, 15.66 joules. It should always be taken into consideration the possible differences in pellet weight and I was using straight from the box 8.44 grain JSBs and normally air arms do like their own air arms pellets I've found. Target wise, as you would expect, this is a real joy to shoot. Take a look. Conclusion. What's not to like about this? It's a real beautiful thing to look at. Handle and shoot. Granted, it's not a budget rifle, but it does look and feel quality. It's nice and quiet, as you would expect, pretty darn accurate, and I would have loved more time with this to get to grips with it even more and produce even better and consistent results. The regulator does make a difference. Not that air arms were ever wide of the mark in my experience. I've spent quite a lot of time recently checking out the budget scene. And it is really important that we have a good budget market. But sometimes it's nice to pop into the higher end of the market. We would all like to drive a high performance car from time to time, even if we can't afford one for every day. But for some who can afford that £1,150 UK price tag, this can be an everyday item. And furthermore, it won't disappoint.